Hello everyone. So as we know, we are moving with the module number one, that is dynamic of communication. In the first video, we have covered the topic, that is process of communication and its importance. In the last video, we have covered two topics, that is what is dynamics of communication and kinesics in detail. Let's in this video see two subtopics of kinesics, that is the do and don'ts of the posture and do and don'ts of the gesture. We will see this two topic first and then we will switch on to the ne next topic. So let's first see the do and don'ts of the posture. In the last video we have discussed what is posture. It is the movement of how we stand, how we sit and how we walk and what we have to keep in mind to see our posture effectively. First. Let's first see the do of the posture. Sit straight in the meeting or any other con conversation in office. Second, keep legs straight while sitting. Walk straight. Lift each leg properly while walking. Keep your shoulders straight while walking. As we have discussed, posture is all about how we walk, how we sit, how we stand. And last do is look up while walking. When you are walking, look up and straight. The don'ts of the postures are never sit leaning backward as it shows a disinterest and laziness. Don't sit cross legged or one leg or the thigh on other. Don't sit with one leg in front and the other at the back. Don't drag your leg while walking. Don't look down while walking or standing and last don't is don't stand with legs too much apart or too much in attention position. So these are some do and don'ts which you have to keep in mind while you presenting yourself. Now let's have a look on some do and don'ts of the gesture. As we have discussed gesture is the movement of our hand, head, our face etc. The do of the gestures are First, use hand movement to show shape, size and point out places. Use hand movement to show authorization about your topic. Use hand movement to add more to your topic. Add more something, more when you are adding something, use your hand movement. Use open hand gesture while pointing out someone. Keep one palm over another holding each other. Use Namaste gesture. While you don't have to say, use any hand movement, use Namaste gesture. This all are the do of the gesture. Let's see do's one by one. Never point out anyone with a finger. Never put your hands inside your pocket while speaking or listening. It shows close, shy or arrogant personality. Never hold your hand while speaking and listening. Never keep your hands at the back particularly never crack yourself knuckles while speaking or listening and last don't is never fiddle your with your keys pen or any other accessories while talking so this is all about the do and don'ts of the gesture this two topic which is included in the previous video that is kinesics now let's move with the new main topics that is proxemics as I have said, the three topic that is kinesics, which we have discussed previously, then this proxemics and next is the parallelistic features. These three are the components of non-verbal communication. So let's see the main topic proxemics. Proxemics is the study of physical space and interpersonal relationship. Interpersonal relationship or you may say interpersonal communication. That, that is the communication between an individual, two individuals. Space is related to behavior norms. The way people use space says a lot about them. In a professional setting, space is used to signal power and status. For instance, the head of the company has a larger space than the junior employees. Gesture should be the accordance with the space available. When there is a plenty of space to use, one should move more bodily or expand one's gesture. When seated in the table, one should use milder gesture. One can even 
subtly react out the table to extend one's space this expresses control and authority it is possible to learn a great deal about how to manipulate space by watching dynamic and influence speaker so this is all about the basic of the proxemics which is the study of the physical space in the interpersonal relationship so how the space used by the person or by the communicator is all about the proxemics now let's see what proxemics includes first intimate as we have discussed it is the space used so intimate comes under the zone of 0 to 18 inches second comes the personal which is which is in the zone of 18 inches to 4 feet third comes the social which is under 4 to 12 feet and last is the public that is under 12 to 30 feet and above so these are the four types which includes under the proxemics let's see in detail one by one so first is the intimate this zone starts with the personal touch and extends just to the 18 inches as we have discussed it is 0 to 18 inches example of it is members of the family lovers spouses relatives and parents fall under this zone the best relationship that describes it is the mother children relationship this zone does not need active conversation one can whisper or make the Un in, uh, unintelligent sounds but still be able to communicate other individual come close for the very brief period and also under the special circumstances when they want to congratulate symp sympathize or console a handshake a pat on the back or the hug all comes under this zone so intimate the first type which is the zone from the personal touch to the 18 inches Second is the personal. This zone stretches from 18 inches to the 4 feet. Examples of this is close friends, colleagues, peers etc. fall in this zone. Instead of whispering sound which is in the intimate. In the intimate the whispering sound is enough or utters silence. That here in the personal there can be a normal conversation in this zone. Though this zone is personal. It is quite relaxed in the casual place. It permits the spontaneous and the unplanned communication. Sitting or standing so close brings, brings one closer to the listener and gives the impression of friendliness and warmth. So this is all about the personal which stretches from 18 inches to 4 feet. Third comes the social. Social events takes place in the radius of 4 feet to 12 feet. In this zone, relationships are more formal and official. People are more cautious in their movement. This situation involves less emotions and more planning. The number of people decides whether it should be the setting sitting or setting standing position. It is though experience that one decide which position is, is to take. If the number of people is less and eye contact can be maintained, a setting setting position can be used. To be authori authoritative with a large audience, a setting standing position is used. So it is more formal type of the communication in this zone which includes under the radius of 4 feet to 12 feet. And the last type is public. This zone starts from the 12 feet and may extend to 30 or the range of the eyesight and hearing. Events that takes place in this zone are formal. Here the audience views what is happening as a par impartial observer. The degree of detachment is very high. The audience is free to do whatever it feels like. Here the speaker has to raise his or her voice to communicate to others or to use a microphone. Public figures like the our prime minister of the uh, country for example have to maintain this distance for the security reason why our prime minister's speech is this is from this far because to maintain the security reasons so here this much distance is for the reason so this is the last type of the proxemics that 
that is public which extends from the 12 feet to the 30 feet and now let's see the topic a small topic of the chapter dynamic of communication that is importance of intercultural communication the intercultural communication skills are those required to communicate or share information with the people from other cultural and social groups so now when you have to speak or when the leader have to communicate with the person of the different cultural he needs the skill of intercultural communication while language skill may be as important part of the intercultural communication they are by no means the only requirement intercultural communication also requires an understanding that different cultures have different customs standards social mores and even though patterns effective intercultural communication is a vital skill for anyone working across countries or continents including those working for multinational companies either in their home country or abroad it is also crucial for anyone working with the people from the other culture to avoid the misunderstanding some key areas of knowledge for those wanting to improve their intercultural communications are some knowledge of the culture organization and institute the institute's history and general way of living the different communities and nations recognition that this aspects affect behavior norms for example there is a considerable history between the greek and the turk there are there is some history between the greek and the turks and therefore it may be considered a potential problem to serve turkish food to the greek person so when a greek person comes to your country for the business purpose you don't have to offer or say anything about the turkish because there is a something history about this both the countries next some understanding of the con conventions that may govern behavior in in certain specific intercultural environment such as views on the role of the woman or the license permitted to the children crucially awareness of our own and other people belief and values and a willingness to recognize when they much clash so this is some example how one can increase the intercultural communication so this is very short topic the importance of the intercultural communication but it is very important when you are working in the, in an organization in a multinational company you have to know each and every history of the different country where you have to deal so in this video we have covered two sub topic of the topic kinesics that is the do and don'ts of the posture and the gesture then we have switched over to the next main topic that is proxemics which is the space used by the communicator while communicating and the last topic we have covered is importance of intercultural communication more topics of module 1 will be further discussed in upcoming videos thank you